It's time now for our focus report. And last month, the leader of Lebanon's powerful Hezbollah group announced that a new chapter in Syria's civil war has now begun. This after missiles were fired from Syrian soil into the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. The Israeli government blamed Iran's revolutionary guards who set up Hezbollah back in 1982 for that attack. Well, our reporters have gone deep into southern Lebanon to find out what locals make of the fact that their homeland has once again been the spark for regional rivalries. The road to Lebanon south is lined with reminders of the past. At the meeting borders of Lebanon, Israel and Syria, this predominantly Shia Muslim area has played host to half a century of conflict. Kana has the legacy of these wars etched on its streets, where the faces of the dead look down upon the village. During the 2006 war with Israel, 38 civilians were killed while sleeping in a bomb shelter. The bomb was so strong, we didn't hear it, we only felt it. My sister was covered with earth. I pulled one of her daughters out of the rubble. Her body was still warm, but she was already dead. My sister's two daughters died right in front of her, and there was nothing she could do. Zainab Shalhoub lost her parents, three siblings and two nieces that night. She lives in fear that her four children will suffer a similar fate. Ten years earlier, in 1996, over 100 people died here when they were sheltering in a UN compound that was hit by an Israeli army rocket. The site has been left untouched for 20 years. Residents have preserved the destroyed UN sign as if to say, not even the United Nations could protect us here. We raise our children so that they know Israel is the enemy. I worry for my children. If there's another war, I pray to God that I won't have to live through what I experienced the last time. Many see this forever war as a direct conflict between Israel and Lebanon. But in the late 1970s, it was Palestinian guerrilla fighters who began using the area to attack Israel. The brutal response targeted Lebanese civilians as much as the militants and destroyed much of South Lebanon. Support quickly grew for Shia political groups like Amal and Hezbollah, which championed rebuilding and defending the South. <laughs> Palestinian refugees are still 10% of Lebanon's population and protest regularly against Israel. Their rage unites them with the angry southern Lebanese. The result? The southern border is a tinderbox. Cecil Hourani is a longtime resident of Marjayoun the largest border town. From his balcony, both Israel and Syria are visible. We do feel that we are at, uh, in danger of uh, further conflicts. Uh, this is an inconvenient location at an uncomfortable moment in time. In Marjayoun, residents live their lives beneath the smoke trails of Israeli army jets. It's a daily reminder that this war is far from over. The town was occupied by Israel for more than 20 years until 2000. Marjayounis have been trapped at the center of every border battle here. We were sitting having lunch here, and all of a sudden we saw a long line of Israeli tanks going north underneath Mount Hermon. And we knew then that it was the new invasion by which Israel would enlarge the area of occupation, which had taken place in 76. Hurani watched from his balcony in 1977 as the nearby village of Ibles Saki was razed to the ground. This is, this is what happened in 1977. Exactly, that's a sample of the houses uh, which is not built yet. There are few of them, maybe 15 or 20 houses where the people did not build them again. The village is a mixture of Christian and Druze. Surrounded by Shia and Sunni villages, it's an example of how residents here have lived side by side for centuries. There's a strong consciousness that they're Lebanese first. But surrounded on all sides by the interests of international actors, they are never far from the destruction of the resulting conflicts. We just live like Lebanese. If a war will happen, the, the, the bombs will not choose uh, the Muslim or Christian. So bad was the damage in the 1970s that the United Nations moved in and have never left. But that didn't stop the village being flattened by Israel again in 2006. 
the villagers abandoned their homes and took months to return. As fears of another war mount, it's becoming a ghost town. Now you heard the shooting when we sit here. We hear every bomb from Golan. People are afraid from surprises, from sudden war. Our tradition is to keep our houses full with food. There's many signs to show that people are worried. No plants, no building. There's nobody in the streets. But it's the ongoing civil war in Syria that currently poses the biggest threat to life in the south. Back home, some champion these fighters for protecting Lebanon's border from IS militants. Others feel their involvement in a foreign war will only bring yet more conflict across the border into Lebanon.